Hi, Russell. Good afternoon, Kevin. Pleased How to meet you? you. Nice to meet you too. Um, I'm Kevin Luengo. I'm a film investigator on uh, MUFON Canada, uh, member ERT, Experiencer Resource Team, uh, specialized in uh, abduction and uh, abduction and extraterrestrial contact. Okay. And um, I wanted to do this interview to make a uh, natural ordinary history. Can you introduce yourself, please? Yeah, my name's Russ Kelly. I am an abductee and uh, super soldier. I started investigating the subject of UFOs back in the late, I would say the late 90s, because I'd had a close encounter and I had memories of being abducted. So this is why I became a UFO investigator also. And I've been investigating UFO encounters, close encounters and abductions for nearly 30 years. Okay. Okay. Uh, what is your date of birth? Well, I was born in um, 1963, late on, you know, sort of like uh, in, in the year. Okay. And um, what is your level of education? No. No, okay. Street level, street level. Yeah. None. <laughs> yeah, okay. None at all. I was bullied at school. So I had a motorbike and a, a rifle. So I used to just, I didn't go to school. <laughs> Good. <laughs> so my days was like um, target shooting, shooting, um, eating corned beef sandwiches, drinking Coca-Cola and trail bike riding. Okay. So I, I didn't have any education and I had um, a number of businesses over the years and was awarded business awards over here for setting up business. This is about um, 25 years ago. Okay. Um, what is your work now? Are you now, um, be, What it is, um, I don't know for the simple reason, because of being abducted, I became very, very ill. So ill that nobody would employ me. You know, every day I was in continuous pain. Um, and I had basically um, come to the point where I decided to work for myself and set my own business up because that way I could work my own hours and do and work that the times when I wanted to, when I felt good to work, you see. Now, what happened was I have uh, something called um, myalgia encephalitis, ME. Over the years, the names have changed. Some people call it fibromyalgia. Some people call it ME, chronic fatigue syndrome, um, very similar to post-traumatic stress disorder but with a lot of pain in the muscles and organs not working right. And I put this down to being abducted. Because okay. when I was abducted, I had um, all my face was all red, like as if it had been, you know, like burnt, like radiation burns. Right. So 
they took me to hospital and nobody could understand why I had these burns and still it plays up even now. And this is, you know, 30 years later, you know, 40 years later when we're talking about, and I still have the problems. So this is, this is one of the things because of me looking into the subject of UFOs, abductions, I have come across many people now who have been abducted who seem to have this, this illness called ME or fibromyalgia or chronic f fatigue syndrome. Yeah, I now, I, I brought this out about um, 15 years ago. I spoke about this on one of these, uh, uh, like a, a UFO chat room. And I got absolutely slated, you know, people say, no, you're talking rubbish. The thing is, I am speaking from my experience as an abductee, right? And as an investigator, which I, I hear a lot of people claim to be investigators. I don't see much investigations going on, right? And also, if I recognise there is a link, why aren't other groups looking and realising there's a link? Big question mark. Is it because they're too busy doing and looking at other things when the truth is there uh, right under the noses? Big question. Yeah. Okay. Where, where did you grow up? I grew up in what uh, is known as a mill a mill city or mill towns, but it's an actual city in Bradford, West Yorkshire, where a lot of weaving, you know, the industrial revolution started and, you know, bringing in, you know, materials, cotton and making cloth, you know, spinning yarn and, um, you know, making rolls of cloth materials, you know, for like suits and, you know, the, the dye houses, dyeing all this. So this is this is where I was I was born into a family that worked in, in this industry. My dad were a carpet weaver. My mum were a, she uh, worked basically, you know, the, making the the actual cloth. You know. So yeah. That's where I, I grew up in Bradford. Bradford in the uh, United Kingdom. West Yorkshire, yeah, UK, yeah. yeah. Okay. Are your sur surroundings open-minded? Open-minded. Me. Yeah. I'm very open-minded. Yeah. Yeah. My parents were. Well, they were very yeah. open-minded. Your parents. You know. Too? Your parents too? Yeah, they was very open minded. Yeah. You know, to to me, me especially me me dad he was with a group of workmates having a tea break in the early hours of the morning. And my dad was talking to his friend and there was shouting going on. And when he looked around he asked three of his brothers that worked at the same work, what was, you know, what's wrong? What are you shouting for? And if you look at that up there and he's looking and he, oh, you've missed it. And a torpedo shaped UFO, they'd seen it and it went into a cloud. And I remember as a child when he came in from work in the morning, you know, sort of like he came in at 10 o'clock in the morning. You know, he was telling me mum he'd seen this. Well, no, his brothers had seen this. 
and workmates, and he missed. He says, I look, looked up, he said, and I just missed it, he says. And by the time I looked, it had gone in the cloud. Okay. So, and he were really, you know, I wish I'd have seen it. I wish I'd have seen it. Okay. That's what started me off being interested. Yeah. Have you sisters and brothers? I have a sister, yeah. Yeah. Brother? Little sister. Two? Just one. Just one? Okay. Have you been in the in the military? Not. Not here on not no. Never? No. Okay. I have friends, lots of friends have been in military. Yeah. Um and they taught me at a young age to, to shoot a rifle. Right. Um and later on um uh, I joined a, a shooting club. So I've got a lot of experience with pistols, you know, revolvers, semi-automatics and rifles, bolt action, semi-automatic, you know, weapons and what have you. I've, I've used, you know, quite a number of different types of weapons. Okay. What is your ethnic background? Ethnic background. I am um, white European. European? I think it's classed as white European or. Okay. Uh, what? What is your blood type? Not sure. Not sure. Okay. Uh, do you have a child, children? No. Have you ever taken drugs or hallucinogens? No. Do you have a psychiatric history? Psych. Psych. So, yeah. Psych no. Oh. Okay. How long have you wanted to talk? From day one. Okay. Uh, why have you decided to talk now? I've been talking about it for a long time, so no time like the present. Okay, good. Do you have a missing time? Yes, many. Many? How, how many, approximately? Um, Oh, must be 40, 40 times. Okay. How did the phenomenon start? Started as a young child, about four years old, looking for a Christmas present and noticed what I could only describe as like a spaceman walking through the gate into my backyard and Basically, I thought it was a dustbin man at first. It wasn't. The thing sort of like went sideways and walked back and looking at me and I waved at it and it sort of like put its hand up and then it went out and it went behind a silver object in the back street and this silver object juddered and went up and disappeared. Are you the, the only on your family who has been abducted? Um, I think so. I'm not sure about me dad because there were, there were telltale things about me dad. Never, never knew him to wake up from when he'd been asleep without choking. You know, I hear lots of people say that they have problems. That have, you know, I used to have problems choking. You know, waking up and choking all the time in the night. And my dad did. So I'm, I'm beginning to wonder. Okay. 
at what uh, age did your first abduction take place? That would have been, um, I think it was about 15 years old. I was at a place um, called um, the Clubby and uh, I was late in for my tea and uh, I had missing time then. Now we're about, must have been 14 or 15, I think, years old. How many times a year do you get abducted? It, it, it could be around something like uh, maybe two to five times. Did your abduction happen when you were awake or when you were sleeping? Always awake, always awake. Have you ever woken, woken up in a different place than where you were originally? No, I can't really say that I have, no. Are your memories like a live memory, a, yeah. lucid, a lucid dream? Or did you recover your memories with the help hypnosis? No, and and I have been hypnotized once, but I always had a hundred percent memory recall. Good. Do you have a visible marks on your skin as a result of addictions? Yeah. Where? <laughs> my face. Your my face. hands and my neck. And um, in a way, physical, yeah, my ear as well, because I had a, a bust eardrum from an accident when I was abducted. Yeah, can you um, say me uh, when you burn? Your, your when I was uh, when I um, I was on a motorbike and I was at a level crossing waiting for a, a train to go past and uh, I was immersed in light. Looked around because I thought there was something behind me, a truck, nothing there. Looked up and there was a, a light coming down on me. Felt like I was hovering, floating. Next thing, I was back on my motorbike, carried on home, saw um, a, a ball of light. It followed me all the way from the side of the road there, more or less, and it flew in front of me. I pulled over and watched it go out of uh, view about five, ten minutes, continued my journey home. When I got in, I had missing time. I had couple of hours missing time. The next morning, when I got up, I went to work. When I went through the doors, took my helmet off. People, one girl said, have you seen your face? And all where my crash helmet um, was open, open face crash helmet. I was all burnt across there, my nose, all down here. Back of my neck and my hands. So, um, and I was ill. I started being ill after that, uh, after that time. Okay. Um, do you have uh, implants if you so where? Yeah, well, I had one and uh, when I was at work, I cut it out. Uh, I had a scalpel at work. I used to work with speakers um, and it was in my arm. So um, that it could have been, I'm not 100% sure, but I did have implants in my ears, in my eyes and in my nose. Yeah. yeah. 
I remember them uh, put, being put in. Have you had any spiritual teachings? Of? Uh, have you had any spiritual... Oh, sorry. Oh, yeah. 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 What, one yeah. example? For example? Um, yeah, the very... Um, How can I explain it? Uh, a, a very strange experience um, being at one with the universe sort of thing. It's, you know, the experience that I had. You know, um, that happened some time ago. So... Um, yeah. Do you feel that you have a, been a given of gift of knowledge? Um, well, when I first came back, when all this lot started, yeah, I would say that uh, um, what happens is that uh, you you can basically um how would you call it now um you can you can basically like read minds you know what i mean you know you, you can it's a, it's like you get healing was another thing but uh yeah you, you seem to be able to, um, oh, what the heck's the word for it now? T tele, uh, you become a telepath. And you're like, you, you, you just know what people, when people are talking to you, you know, you know, you, you can tell, you just know what they're thinking. You know what I mean? It's a bad thing, really. Not good. You know, because you, you just know what they're thinking. So there was that, and like I say, like having like this Ely Nan sort of thing. Yeah. Did you feel uh, you had a special purpose? Oh, yeah, yeah. All of a sudden. Yeah. Um, yeah, I must admit, I, I think... When I say always, I won't say always, but I would say that uh, round about uh, when it started happening, when I was about 16, really, very, very strange, had that feeling. Up until uh, maybe about 10, 15 years ago. I haven't got it now, but I had. I had it, yeah. Can you describe the entities? that abducted you uh, size, eyes, yeah. clothing, or not positive, negative? Of, yeah. Well, um, tall, very tall, 15 foot tall, human, bald, um, a bit like Nesferatu, but not fangs, but actually worse in a way that the mouth is big. Um, some more than others. It's like anything else. I suppose you get good-looking people, get bad-looking people. You know, some of you know are these are the the mouth or seem to be really, you know, like gonna bite you. You know, um, their eyes just seem to be white uh, with pupils, but not the same as ours. Not this, you know, um, and. Uh, Ears were a bit pointed, but they were 15 foot tall. I had, however, seen something bigger than them, and I couldn't explain it. Not many of them back where they lived on their planet. So I, 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 I don't know how to explain it. I caught a glimpse, and it looked like that. You know, something, and I'm thinking, 
pass. You know, Oof. but um, a lot of the time they wear the same uniform as us, um, which is black, like this, what you would call um, this suit, what we wear, which is a life suit. It keeps us alive. It, it makes us feel really good and powerful, strong. Uh, but there, I'll just go into this and, and, and say that some of them are actually six foot tall that are at the side of us, right? Now, it, what it seems is that for some reason, they've been um, made um, that size, not made that size, but put to that size to work alongside us because as a punishment in a way, because they were like, same as us, they were like soldiers, but like officers and high ranking, you know. Now, their hierarchies did not want uh, them to, to become soldiers, and that's why they're smaller. They normally use, uh, uh, wear different like clothes, like, you know, like long gowns and stuff, and you know, different colours like green, blues, purples. I've seen one wear gold, you know, elaborate colours and stuff. Um, but these who were the same race, you know, seem to wear the, the military uniforms. And like I say, there, there was outcasts, even though there were because there was not supposed to fight. It wasn't supposed to fight. So, um, you know, that's why they, they made them, you know, more or less small and say made them, you know. So, very odd, very, very strange. Uh, but uh, because we're like, more like scientists and, and stuff. And I think it was a bit of a, they thought were a bit of an insult to fight, if you see what I mean. But yeah, it's all right for us to fight. How does that work? How did the entities move? They just walked freely like us, you know, sort of like feet, legs and feet, you know, like I say, they were, you know, human looking skeleton of a, a human, but very big. 15 foot tall, you know. They're giants? Yeah. Giants? Yeah, giants. But, oh, most definitely, yeah. Yeah. Can you name them and tell what planet they are from? I, I don't like naming them uh, where they're from. But I have a feeling, because the thing is, you know, we was told what we needed to know. And believe me, even though that, you know, we worked together in the a military unit, you know, it was need to know basic basis, you know, like what they needed to tell us, we'd know. And what we didn't need to know, they wouldn't tell us, you know. And I had a feeling that, that they didn't want many people to know where they were from. But I have a, a funny feeling because I have spoken to other people. And let's just say it, it, Mars, you know, sort of like is a good bet. Okay. Could be wrong. Uh, Could be wrong. He lives on Mars. Under, oh, yeah. under, uh, under Mars. Well, the thing is, who knows? You know, it's like the moon. You only see what the scientists show you and what you can see through a telescope. You don't know what's on the other side. You know, um, you only can see with telescopes, you know, and what people, what the scientists and what the TV show you, you know, how do you know what's going on? You don't. You've got to take a lot, or, you know, sort of like on trust. And uh, they've become now people that I don't trust. 
my own government don't trust. Did any of these experiences have an impact on your health? Oh yeah. Or physical? Bad. I see. Yeah, bad. Um, when all this started, I told you obviously about my face and what have you, you know, the problem. And then after that, I was diagnosed with something called fibromyalgia. Uh, well, no, it was called, back then it was called ME, myalgia encephalitis. It's now people call it fibromyalgia or chronic fatigue syndrome. There's my personal opinion is it is what I would call um, an after effect of alien abduction or traveling in um, traveling through um, space time and um, through uh, teleportation you could call it some kind of sickness you know um, you know like travel sickness Okay. Um, uh, have you angled tympanum? You know? Any tympanum on a, and a, in your ear? Yeah. Uh, a tympanum angled. Have I got an angle on my ear? Yeah, and, uh, in in your ear. It's both had implants, um, but when I was abducted, when I was on a mission, an helmet, my helmet was taken. I was taking it off because the communications problem, and someone behind me shot me in the back. Right, yeah by accident and the sound weapon caused my ear to my eardrum to bleed because it was half on half off so i've always got a problem now in my right ear but there would have been both originally both ears would have had implants in okay um Are you still in contact with these entities? Oh yeah, they're always about. Always? Always, yeah. How, how do you feel about them? You know, sometimes I just wish I could be back on my motorbike living the life I used to live. You know, um, it, it's... I've met some nice people, don't get me wrong. I've met some nice people in this subject. And I've been fascinated by what I've learned from other people and things that they've told me. But, you know, there's a downside, there's a very dark side and some very, very nasty people, you know, around. Um, and... If I could be back on my motorbike with, you know, friends and just living that life again, you know, I would go back today. Do you feel that they have downloaded some things into you? Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, you know? You know what? Um, no, not not sure, not sure. Okay. Has the way uh, you see things changed? Have I seen things change? Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. In, in... Um, as the way you see things. Change. Oh right, yeah. Uh, oh yeah, yeah. Yeah. Do you have uh, any physical evidence of these events? 
Um, no, not as such. Apart from when I've been contacted, I've got videos where these things are close to me, you know, and I'm not just talking about little lights and, and I'm talking about craft. I've videoed lots of craft around me and I've videoed um, when I'm filming UFOs being contacted, being zapped by um, five lights coming down from the sky at me. You can see it all, you know. So in a way, you know, that's that's contact, no matter what anybody says. I knew it happened, I felt it happen, I videoed it. So yeah, I have got evidence, that's my evidence. Whether people like it or don't think it is, it's up to them. They can interpret it how they like. Do you uh, do you have any drawings on your abduction of the entities that abducted you? Yeah, I used to have quite a lot, but I, there were a leak, and a lot of my paperwork um, got wet and destroyed. But uh, I've I have got stuff. I have drawn things, and I've started to to draw things more now. Thank you. As a result of this abduction, have you acquired any mental or physical abilities? Um, like I said, when I came back at first, there was this, you know, you could, um, it was like, um, you, you could, you know, tell what people were thinking. You know what I mean? Um, and um, healing powers, so, but they've gone now, they've gone now. You know. But telepathics, telepathic? Telepathic, telepathic, yeah, sorry, yeah. Have you ever used hypnosis? Hypnosis, sorry. Yeah, um, I didn't need it, but somebody said, look, I'd like you to to be hypnotised and regressed many years ago. But I already had 100% recall. Um, so, yeah, I have. Okay. Last question for the first part. Uh, you are the author of a book called E.T. Rider. When, when did you start writing it? That more or less uh, when things started happening, when I was, uh, you know, around 16. Because I was a little bit arty, I, I did do a little bit of artwork as well. And I was writing, but my spelling wasn't good. So all the stuff, what I wrote, somebody else um, three years ago, with my spelling, correcting all my spelling mistakes. And basically then I had the book. So the book goes back to, you know, like back then when I was like 16, a lot of it. Okay. We're talking about Space Force when you are a super soldier. In your book, you say you are enlisted as a super soldier. That's right. We'll start by talking about the part where you say you are a super soldier. Do you know? You tell me yes or no. Yeah. Michael Sala? No. You don't know Michael Sala? Okay, Emery Smith. Say again. Emery Smith. No. No. Randy Kramer. No. No. Okay. No. Corey Good. Oh, say again. Corey Good. Oh, I've heard of Corey Good. Yeah. 
Corey Good, yeah. I've heard of Corey Good, yeah. Yeah. John Charles Moyen. No. no. Um, David Rousseau, a French uh, uh, Space Force soldier, Jean Charles Moyen, and David Rousseau. Okay. Um, Elena Danan. No. Tony Rodriguez. Oh. Uh, Tony Rodriguez. Tony, Rodriguez. yeah, of course, yeah. yeah. Tony, yeah. yeah. Andrew Basiego? No. No? Okay. Do you know that uh, in my investigation, you are all the same age? Really? Yeah, the same age. Do you uh, know, know uh, their stories? I've interviewed uh, Mr. Rodriguez. Oh, okay. Um, about, well, it must have been about, Tony Rodriguez uh, must have been about seven years ago. Seven years ago, okay. Yeah. Okay. How many, do you, how many years uh, did you serve as a super soldier? From 16 to four years ago. No, um, five to five years ago. Five years ago, you you served in Super Soldier, yeah. Yeah. Okay. We didn't call it that, right? Yeah. The name Super Soldier, right? Yeah, was given to me by other people, like Tony, saying you seem to be the same as us. Right, yeah, like super soldiers. I didn't, when I was talking about being a soldier, right, yeah, back in 96, right, I was just a soldier. But we had this suit that made you feel strong, invincible. And someone said, oh, like super soldiers. And explained, yeah, you know, because the suits, what we've got, they're basically a, a life force suit, make you super, super strength, super strong, everything, keep you alive, right? Yeah. But I was just talking about being a soldier. But the problem is, when I was talking about this, I was discouraged from talking about this. I was told, you cannot talk about this, right, yeah? The magazine that I used to write for, I videoed and sent them video information, uh, information, video footage, right, yeah? The very people telling by this magazine about UFOs and aliens, you'll find the truth in here discouraged, not allowed to talk. Everybody else was talking about me and aliens. Very, very fluffy, nice aliens, right, yeah? I was talking about something that happened to me, right, yeah? Something very personal that I knew was real, and I could see people talking about their abductions, and it was like there was looking at somebody else's book and just spewing out all the other information, what they read, right, yeah? I was talking about being a soldier. You cannot talk about being a soldier. Yeah? yeah. The very people who was, should have known better. So, yeah. you know, and the thing is, because then I had nothing to do with them anymore. It was almost like... Um, you're not welcome here because I had the guts to turn around and say, you know what? You want my stories, you want my videos, you want my pictures, my photographs, but you don't want me to stand up at your conferences and talk about this to you. Yeah, that's how I felt. 
and I still do. And the problem is, everybody talks about, have you heard this person? Have you heard that? I've heard one or two of them. But you know what? I was talking long before these people about being a soldier fighting. But you can't talk about that. Ooh, too much like conspiracy theory. Aliens with guns fighting a war. Well, isn't that what we're talking about? Aren't we talking about, you know, UFOs and aliens? Don't sell magazines. No good. Yeah. Okay, I, I understand. Why do you think you were recruit, recruit, recruited? Right. From my point of view? Yeah. yeah. Because... You get some nasty comments like, you've never been in, let's say, let's call it what it is, you've never been in the regular army, right, yeah? No, I haven't been in the regular army. I've trained alongside people in the regular army. Um, I know lots of people. I've made equipment for the regular army. I made clothing for the regular army, special forces equipment, right, yeah? So I do know a lot about the regular army and everything, but I didn't serve in the regular army. So then I have people saying, well, you can't be a super soldier then, right? Now this is, I put this to you, right, yeah? Not everybody that's been abducted will go through being put into a military unit. Right, yeah? yeah? Other people are just abducted and they don't seem to know anything more than they're abducted, they're being put on a, a craft or they're in a room. Not everybody is abducted by the same aliens. Right? right. Different types of alien races. Some seem to be like humans, some seem to be like creatures you know, like all sorts of different races and creatures. Some seem to be mechanical, like robots, right? Okay. Not everybody's abductions are the same. Not everybody's taken by the same creatures, aliens, etc. Not everybody's put into the same military units. Now, not everybody's been in the regular army. The ones that haven't been in the regular army, like myself, people say, well, how comes you? Why not a regular soldier? Because I had a fresh mind. They didn't have to they didn't have to teach me, you could say in some in some respects, you know, like somebody will teach you one way and somebody will say, forget what you've been taught. I'll show you from the start how this is done. Right? So these have said to me, or looked at me, he hasn't already been programmed. Yeah? So we can, everything what he's got in his mind is from us. There's nothing else there. You know, no other training. Right, yeah. So it's yeah. like a fresh mind and the way they want to train me, not the way the others have been trained. Also, look at it this way. The others, if they've been trained and they're in the regular army, that means nothing to do with aliens. Right, yeah. If you look at it realistically, they've not been trained by aliens, have they? If they're in the regular army, that means they've been trained by the regular army, America or whatever army, right, yeah? So the question is, are they remembering something which is maybe some black ops where they've been taught that way and they remember that? what they've been told is it to do with aliens 
or is it sort of like um, some kind of, um, you know, like what what do they, they say, honeycombing and remembering that and maybe there's something else behind it or is it a case of they have met aliens as well? The question is, you know, why are the aliens, why are they talking about aliens then and being a super soldier with aliens if they're in the regular army? Is that because that the regular army are, have got aliens that they're allies with, right? Okay. Just the same as me, the aliens that take me in their in their army, they teach me, right? So I, I am that alien race, I'm their ally. So it's the same thing in a way, isn't it? But, you know, instead of them, you know, sort of like um, going to the military and getting somebody who's already been trained, they're taking me instead. Okay. So, well, does that make sense? Yeah. yeah. Uh, what what is your training? Pardon? What is your training on the on the regular army and space force? What training did I train? Yeah. With the well, I trained with the aliens. Yeah. And. Uh, basically, you know, sort of like the the first time um, when we're taken, right? Yeah, and basically um, everything uh, when we had his uniform on and an helmet on, on the visor. At first, it was a visor. All information had come. It had come from on the visor, right? Yeah, yeah, like a, a screen, and inside headphones. Right, yeah? yeah? And they tell us the basic battle skills. So the, the, the tell us how to use a weapon, you know, sort of like um, the range of the weapon, how to, to arm it, you know, sort of like it, it couldn't, you couldn't touch the weapon, right, yeah, unless you had your helmet on. You had to have the helmet on, you couldn't touch it, you know, only uh, in a, a safe zone, a safe area, right? Yeah, you could you could hold the weapon, but it hadn't got to have the initiator, the battery pack in, because the battery pack, which were like magazines, right? Yeah, um, there was in essence the the actual weapon itself, the battery because it was a sound weapon. It didn't fire bullets, it fired sound. That sound could destroy a human's eardrums. So you have to have this helmet on. Always have to have the helmet on first before you put, when you pick the weapon up, right, yeah, you could not pick it up unless the, the battery pack was out of that. You know what I mean? Never put it in unless you had an helmet on. So there's all the, the basic battle skills, there's the, the safety, um, you know, the range safety when you've got a, a weapon, you know, sort of like, you know, you, you don't put a, you don't pick a weapon up and, and sort of like a magazine and you put, a, you know, all these, what you would call range safety, what we've been taught. Now I knew range safety anyway, because I was in a shooting club. So I, I knew how to use a weapon, different weapons from pistols, you know, revolvers, semi-automatics and rifles. So I already had been trained to use a weapon, but not by the military. So I already had that skill. Then I was one of the first in the UK. I opened up a paintball site. Have you ever heard of paintball? Okay. Yeah. I opened one of the first paintball sites back in 95 in the UK. So, 
you know. I had a lot of skills and I was training, you know, sort of like in survival techniques. So I had a lot of skills, but like I say, not what you would call the regular army. Okay. Uh, how many programs have you participated? Participated? Well, I've been taken 60 times. Did you particip participate in secret alien or human space program? Well, <laughs> yeah, it's secret. Uh, okay. okay. The thing is, right, yeah. Which one? Which secret program are we talking about? In this program for you, or for the aliens, neutral or the darker side? Well, to be quite honest, <laughs> when you, you know, for you. In reality, right, yeah, whether I've trained with um, regular army or not, or like the, the others, don't you think it's the darker side anyway? You know what I mean? So, yeah, I would say it's a, it's a dark side, isn't it? You know, being taught to fight in an army, whether it's a regular army, what the rest of the guys, you know, like the, the super soldiers are in, or whether it's the the alien race that's, that's put me in and I'm regular with them, it makes no difference. If you're, if you're going out and you're a soldier, you have one, one goal as a soldier. And yeah. it's not a good goal, is it? Yeah. You know what I mean? It is what it is. You know, it's very dark. Yeah. In this program, you participated of, of your own free will? No. That's why they call it abduction. Yeah. If somebody had come to my door and, Russ, do you want to come out and we, we're going to go and we're going we're gonna to train? Yeah, I won't ask. I just ended up injection back in my neck, in a chair, tube down my throat, helmet on. Next thing, going through all this in an arena, you know, sort of like um, showing basic battle skills. You know, this hologram showing us how to, uh, to train and, and, and everything. And, and, you know, it's a different thing altogether. If somebody invites you, asks you, different matter. You know, somebody takes you, you're being forced against your will. No matter what anybody says, whether the regular soldiers or whatever, you're taken, you're taken. You know, against your will, without consent. I know, I understand. Uh, are these space programs related to the British government? For you, for your opinion? Or government apart? I've got to be careful what I say here. I've got to be very careful what I say here. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, yeah. We we've got they've got their objective. Yeah. Yeah. And my government does not come into it. In fact, um, you know, sort of like, yeah. Let's let's just say that. I will, truth, you know, the truth is immaterial, you know. Okay. Thank you. In your opinion, 
Are there several countries participating in, in this space program? Oh yeah, there's lots lots of different countries. But I've come across different. <laughs> I've come across um, super soldiers on over on the other side. Yeah. Oh yeah. It's like as I said to one some time ago. Are we okay? Are we okay talking? We sworn enemies. Yeah. <laughs> no, seriously, yeah. Do you think that this uh, that these programs are secret? Well, we're talking about them, so they're not that secret. <laughs> okay. Well, when when you say soldier, you say what? Who were you fighting against? Right, hang on. Let's, let's get me a list out. <laughs> right, let's let's have a look at my list. <laughs> the question should be, who wasn't we fighting? Right, yeah. I'll explain now. Right. I've met other alien races and they have allies fighting alongside them from America, South America, from my own country, if you can call it that, um, from Europe, um, Eastern Europe, Russia, Japan, China, Australia, everybody's involved. Everyone's involved. Everybody's got allies. The, the worst of all, what we came across, what I, the last one of the last, um, I would say, missions was with the, the tall blue aliens with the, the Chinese. Their technology, better than America's better than America's, big, big problems, big problems. We had big problems with them. They'd worked out uh, uh, about um, one of the ways we travel, right, yeah, and they knew where we were, where we were. So, you know, it's like our technology, right, in, in my unit, or in the regiment, I should say, which I told you, which is Omega, right, yeah? Now, the problem is when we first started injections, we had stuff pumped into us. We had this tube put down and never found out exactly what that was for. Um, helmet put on. We went through all the rigmarole of being taught, you know, military uh, battle skills, etc. And one of the things, right, yeah, um, is that later on, we had implants in his eyes. We had implants put in his eyes, right, yeah? Um, we had something in his nose and in his throat and in his ears, right, yeah? Always have a problem. Um, I'm deaf nearly in my right ear because of an accident that happened there, right, yeah? When a weapon went off and my helmet wasn't on properly because I was talking and explaining there were a problem with communications and the weapon, I got shot in the back and I went deaf, ear bleeding and everything. But the thing is, from having an helmet on and having this visor and seeing all the information in front of his eyes, you know, like a fighter pilot, you know, they see everything uh, from the cockpit. Everything comes up like cockpit reading and stuff, yeah? and visor reading. From that happening, what happened is implants, like looking at this, this screen now, a computer screen, you've got a cursor at the top, you've got all the symbols there. You move your cursor by your eyes. Your eyes move the cursor down, right, yeah? When you want to do something, you put what you're doing, and then you click, yeah, yeah, you go to whatever, and you go down and you click the, the red button to click, 
Right, yeah, so you're moving all this like and going down clicking. Later on, that technology were at the side. So when you move the cursor, you click the cursor in, down, instead of a red button. So you move it going across and clicking, clicking with your eyes. Everything's done with your eyes. But you know, right, yeah? Oh, I could hear and communicate back to HQ because I had implants in my ears until that one exploded. Like when the gun went off, right, yeah. So they can, they can hear, obviously, um, from my vocals, um, but then there's a the part where we telepathic. This alien race is telepathic, by the way. Some of the most vicious fighters, right, yeah, are the women. Because the, our security on the planet, right, yeah, the best security, right, yeah, are the females. Because the females from this planet, right, yeah, they can sense aliens, um, let's call it what it is, teleporting into their space 10 minutes before it happens. They can they can get a signal, can the women, because they're telepathic, they've got this sense, and most of them, I'm telepathic, I'm in a telepathic unit in Omega, right, yeah? Now, most of the scouts are telepaths. Okay. Uh, we, we against can... which exo exogenous races uh, were you fighting? Well, if the the worst of all were these what you call reptiles or dragon, the the like dragon race. There's also the reptile that the the more the not as the dragons do look like dragons. The others are like the lizards, the reptiles, and they look like, and they're big as well also. Usually about the same, about 15 foot tall. You know what I mean? Very st amazingly strong. And then there's uh, the one what I met, and I, I have two witnesses as well. When I was on Earth, when I was at a friend's house, walking around, looking at an area which is like a haunted road. Something happened and we met something called an, in, an insectoid. Have you heard of insectoid? It must have been, oh God, it must have been 10 foot tall, like a human. It were in a car, it got out of a car and it reared up and it started and, it, and but it had a, a suit on and it looked like and i just looked my heart was pounding and my friend he won't look at it he looked away my other friend said hello nice day and we are walking straight back to the car you know what i mean i didn't want to look at it i wanted to get out of there my friend he was in front of me it was so that was on earth, seeing it at the side with two other people. It's, that's in the book as well. So they're around, the, these insectoids, and, and unbelievable. I was terrified. As much as seeing the dragos, the dragons, and the lizard people. And then, of course, there's, there's the others, alien greys, the tall blue aliens. They're just the same as the alien greys, but a lot bigger and taller, about 10 foot tall. And they're like blue. Nothing different, but taller and, and same heads and, and what have you, same features, but tall and blue. And there was... Each, what I found is, they were working along with the, this Chinese race. Amazing technology. 
Okay. You, you know, sort of like uniforms, a bit like the old samurai, in a way, their uniforms. You know, very, very hard to, to you know what I mean, terrifying, coming against them. You know that you're, you know what I mean, would not want to be anywhere near them, would not want to be back. I wouldn't want to be back with any of this anymore. You know what I mean? But uh, so all the race, alien races seem to have allies. And they seem to, some of them, um, some of the, um, the what, the EBs, I've seen American soldiers with them. You know what I mean? They're like American. But the problem is, and this is where it gets a, a little bit, you know, who's who? When everybody's got started wearing uniforms and they're all the same, one colour, maybe black, and they've got um, balaclavas on, you, you, then you st it starts getting like, who are, you, who are the, the race of soldiers that are fighting with these aliens? Where are they from? You know, sort of like, because you, you, the insignia it isn't from like, it's not exactly the UN, is it? You know what I mean? <laughs> you know? Yeah. So you're up against this, you know, you can see things panning out where there's people in different countries over borders and we turn up and it's over you and you can speak any language you can speak any language um you know sort of like because it's how thing you know the technology you can speak but sometimes you, you'll have been taken to an area and we'll have people from that area speaking because that's where they're from you know, and they might be talking European language and what have you. But they don't know who we are. They think that we're the, the, the same, you know, sneaky beaky gear, all in black. You don't see the actual, you don't see the, the, the life suit, what we're wearing, because we've got other jackets and pants on over the top. So we're fitting in with surroundings. You know, and usually when that happens, it's because we're lifting somebody. It's not because we've gone in to fight as such. It's because there's a, 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 a specific target, an area or a base, right, yeah, or somebody that we've got to lift or take, abduct. We've got to go. And usually it won't be just a normal civilian. You know, it'll be somebody in government or somebody in the military, and we take them. Simple as that. Okay. Uh, Dragos and Insectoid, uh, they work together? The Dragos? Yeah, the Dragos and Insectoid. No. No. <laughs> <laughs> That would be some party if they got together. <laughs> can, yeah. can you describe Dragos? Uh, skin, uh, color skin, eyes. The the uh, the, the Dragos. Sometimes things. I've come across white ones. There's green Dragos, um, blue. You know, um, and sometimes they're, they're a little bit different. Sometimes the snouts are more pronounced like dragons you know sometimes the features are more dragon and big eyes um a bit like the reptoids they're bloody you know they're unbelievable you know um the the the, the features are always human like you know what i mean a lot of the time you see a um something like you know like a reptile uh, uh, or you see it and it's more of a human and it's just a bit with the, the eyes, two eyes, one, you know, going down that way, one opening that way. And it's the colour where sometimes it's it's more than that. They're, they're not human at all. You know what I mean? They're, they're just, the, the figures, and I'm, you know, a, a human. The structure, the skeleton, you know, the, the two legs and, you know, sort of like arms and, and legs and it. And you know, sort of like that's the only thing. When you look up 
and you just got this dread. You know what I mean? Because they're not human, they're monsters. Okay. And the, the color of eyes? Um, it just depends. Usually, they, they were like um, green, you know, sort of like brown. I have seen, I haven't really, I can't honestly say I've seen, you know, I've heard people say that they've, they've seen red eyes. I can't really say that. Uh, the one time I've seen something, a glimpse of something red, but you don't know whether that would be because it had been hit and, you know, blood, you know, like, but usually like a, a, a green colour or, you know, sort of like browny, but mostly green. Okay, and the characters? Pardon? Uh, characters, you, you know? Yeah. The characters. Yeah, of entities, uh, dragos. Yeah. The character of, of the dragos, uh, you know, yeah. sort of like the just... <sighs> When we, we, we get told to do a job, right yeah and that's to put these things down and usually take an area um to retrieve something to take something usually like um a building an underground building or you know some facility right yeah and basically cause as much damage and, and sometimes get people abductees away that have been taken that are slaves that they're transporting and what have you or, or whatever they're, they're being used for we you know our job once we've done that and and we've sort of like um got rid of the enemy mostly um getting rid of their actual allies and themselves because these don't want to hang around and fight for themselves they do but You know, so once they get, once we've taken over, once we've breached, you know, that actual um, facility and taken it, etc., they get out of there. You know what I mean? And if there's any prisoners, we'll, we'll take the prisoners. We don't have anything to do then. You know, once they're transported and it, the transportation... Once they've, once they've been taken and they've been transported away, right, there's some of them to be interrogated and go to a special area to be interrogated, right, yeah? And uh, basically, we don't have anything else to do then. You know what I mean? We don't get close to them. We, you know what I mean? We don't want to get close to them. You know what I mean? We just do a job and, and, and that's it. You know, you, sort of like... Can you describe the tales? Oh, the tales? The tales, yeah. Right. The tales so, of remember, I've got a busted ear, so, uh, okay. you know, and I'm on a, a small computer, so I can't hear right good. Um, yeah, you know, some, you know, sort of like are longer. The, the tail seems to be longer, but you don't really, you don't see that. Some look to have, um, how can I put it? I know I've seen them use tails as a weapon, you know, uh, you know what I mean? Sort of like, it, remember, they've got staffs. They've got like these staff weapons and what have you. Um, very powerful and you know i've seen the tails being used if i remember once a staff had been knocked out with one of the hands and sort of like the the, the tail bang it'd knock you you know what i mean it, it, you know we'd be okay because our suits you could take a pounding and it would stop like um you know like a knife you know like kevlar So okay. it, it, it stopped Kevlar coming through, but better. But you would still feel that it of something. But these are, um, are very sharp. You know what I mean? If it wasn't for our uniform, you know, but I mean, I'd been hit and my uniform has split. 
and they're not supposed to. And that's with these things, they're so strong and powerful. Yeah. You know what I mean? So they use them as a weapon. You know what I mean? Because that's what they are. You know, basically, it's an animal, isn't it? You know, so yeah, tall, but I, I've seen them with shorter tails. You know, but, um, you know, like I say, we never got that close. You know, you'd, you'd be, be targets and you'd have a rifle and you'd be pointing. When the, we hit them, they implored. They actually implored. Not explored, they implored with the sound weapon what we've got. You know, but, you know, what sometimes you're told not to kill, you know, certain ones. You need to take them back as a prisoner for whatever. Yeah. You know what I mean? You'll take it back. I'm not taking it back. I'm not going anywhere near it. You know what I mean? Okay. Um, with which alien races did you collaborate? Well, it was a. T t you see, you could call them in a way like Martians. Martians? You could call the tall, bald ones. Right, yeah. You know, sort of like uh, there's a, a good school of four. That they were what you would call Martians. The But remember, all the planets, right, yeah, have had life on all the planets, forms of different forms of life, but still forms of life. Sure. What, just because we can't see life and, and don't mean to say it's not there, might not look the same as us, but, you know, they're all right. What, um, for what? Purpose where you're fighting? What purpose do any people fight for? Yeah. You know, that is a big question. Yeah. Why why do we fight? Why do humans fight? Why are they fighting now? Because after when when everybody's made up, when every, when the war's over, they'll end up shaking hands and then doing business together just like the first world war just like the second world war why bother the thing is if if being serious when what is the war right well I'll, this is what as far as i i know this is as far as i know right yeah that is that Going back, going back a long time, right, yeah, they were all more or less the same. But something happened that that caused one um, to be so um, disheartened, so vengeful with, you know, sort of like how things have worked out for that person decided that he was going to basically, you know, create it. And, and this is another thing. It seemed like he was going to create something that was um, not the norm, you know, sort of like create something that, you know, like, how can I put it? Um, something, he was going to create something different you know sort of and I, I can't explain really but the just was not happy with the way things were and he wanted to create something else going against all the rules and um it seemed like um it was fighting his own it seemed like it was fighting his own and these aliens weren't aliens at one point there was, you know, like brothers, more or less. So it's, I suppose, what sometimes what they say is, 
family feuds are the worst. Yeah. If you've ever heard that saying, you know, family feuds can be the worst. You know? Yeah. Um, where did you fight? On Earth? Under Earth? On or in space? <sighs> where is that? Earth? Everywhere. Earth? Europe, Africa, um, South America, um, Northern Terrain, Canada, on different planets, you know, sort of like Russia, you name it, we've been there. Under Earth? Uh, we have been under Earth, yeah. Some of the some of the um, alien bases, yeah. and there's many. The thing is, it, it's, the Earth is honeycombed. Okay, and in uh, Afghanistan, I haven't been to Afghanistan, um, but uh, I, I have spoken to somebody who was there and was in in the Middle East, in Kuwait, and. Um, was there when a, a flying saucer came down and technology, everybody wanted this flying saucer. So, you know, it was, how can I, how can I, a bit political because the closest um, people to it weren't American, but the Americans wanted it. Right? So, so I think they actually got it, but I don't think, uh, the military unit that was there liked the idea. You know what I mean? That it was theirs and, you know. And yeah, uh, so, yeah, um, there's, there's, there's things going on all around the planet and people won't believe. You know, the, the skirmishes with these things and there has been, you know, forever. Yeah. Uh, what what kind of weapon did did you see? Did you use? Oh right. Well, at the first, it was a, a sound weapon, and what you did was um, you, you put it was like a, a magazine, like um, you know what you put round bullets in, right? Yeah. But it wasn't bullets. What it was, it's a like a battery charge, and it goes in. Right, yeah. Now the thing is, when, when that goes in, uh, there's a setting and just a dial, and it's like any other dial in. It's like music, and it's the same kind of thing in a way. The more power, you know, the the level higher, and basically, when you eat something, you know, you should see what it does. It's unbelievable, and the range. You know, sort of like, um, the, the, like I said, the power, the the further it goes and the more of a hit, if you see what I mean. Now, with the dragon, uh, Dragos and, and what have you, these, it like, exp it like implode. When it eats something, it goes, it like turns something inside out. You know, it just um, amazing. So... Then, um, because of the battles, you know, the, the next lot had, um, like, um, you'd have at the side, these clips where magazines went, right, yeah, for the simple reason, well, because the battles were taking forever and you needed more power. So the weapons, you know, you'd have the same magazine, but you'd have a battery pack at the side. Right. Then what happened, the, they changed the game and underneath you had um, like this laser cannon and it would fire a laser. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh... So that was underneath. So the, they, had the, they had the side, you had the same at the side, the dial, and then at the front, right, yeah, you'd have this, la you'd have another trigger at the front for the laser cannon. And then we'd have mobile cannons later on, which were like um, 
a thing what the the troops had seen and underneath it was uh, a cannon right yeah and the, the fly on this this thing like a novacraft well not a novacraft it was like i can't explain it was like um, a motorbike and you sit in it and basically the front underneath where the target was they'd fire this laser cannon you know like an aircraft in a way it, strange things you know what i mean i always wanted to go in one of them <laughs> never got to use one i always thought wow you know what I mean? I won't mind the going that. <laughs> it's, it's, uh, it's amazing. Uh, do you know about directed energy uh, weapons? Directed energy weapons, yeah. Yeah, yeah. D -E -W. Directed energy weapons. Yeah. Uh, do you mean the modern day ones, like you see, you know, like what, what they've been talking about? Is that what you mean? The the ones that sort of like you see on TV that directed energy. Do you mean that type of thing? Because m most of these weapons, like I say, there was um, the directed. They usually come from the base somewhere. You know what I mean? A directed energy weapon usually comes from some kind of transporter base. Like, you know, do you mean the ones like a beam? Yeah. It, yeah. Well, they, they could be anywhere. They could, you know, sort of like, it just depends. Uh, mobile units, like I say, they have um, these, which are like uh, laser cannons. Um, but the, the, the ones are directional, you know, sort of like... Um, they're usually from, you know, like uh, the base or the headquarters and they'll sound, you know, like you, you see, sometimes you'll see like a, a long, like laser, you know, like, and then bang, you know what I mean? Then the target's just destroyed, you know, well, I've, I've seen those, but they're sort of like from ba other bases use them. You know, sort of like, uh, let's just say that you never know where you might see them. Yeah. You know, um, because they're all over. I mean, obviously, different countries have these weapons anyway. You know, got to be careful what I say here. <laughs> sure. Yeah. So. Yeah. Just one or two pointers uh, uh, about things because it might sound a little bit, you know, like uh, abstract. But on his uniform, I was telling you that there's like two uh, dials. There's one uh, a dial when you put the the suit on. Uh, you actually, when you turned it, I remember you like when I turned it, it were like. It, it tightened up and it went all these different colours. It at first it like it seemed to fasten itself. You put it on and it went like that and it just fastened itself. But when you turned the dial, I was telling you that these colours it went yellow, you know, green, light green, dark green, blue, etc. But underneath that there was another dial and a button. Now, the thing is, that's a very special device. When you press that device in, you teleport. Okay. Now, this is for emergency use, right? Very, very well, you very press that in, and I can then walk through walls. So, well, walk through solid objects. Right? Yeah. When you let go of the button, Right, yeah, you're back. You've got to be very, very careful that you do not let that button out when you're halfway through a solid object. Oh. Because okay. that's death. Yeah. Like you've never imagined. Right, yeah? Yeah, yeah. I so, but there's a dial 
can you can turn the dial around and press the button in. When that dial goes back, right, yeah, it pops out, then that means you've got your hands free. You've got a weapon to use, right, yeah. Again, you've got to be really careful. Make sure that that does not pop out and you're in the middle of walking through solid matter, solid objects. So it was just something I, I thought I'd better explain to you, you know, about this is like uh, teleporting, but it's what you would call teleporting for when you're in circumstances where you're in battle and you need to get out of an area. Right? Okay. So it's basically. A, it's a little box? It's, it's on you. It's, it's on... It's the second, like I was saying, there's two like um, buttons, two knobs, and it's just here, you know, like on his, just above, just below his neck, on his chest. On chest. Yeah. So the top one is the one what you turned and it gets a suit. Okay. It initiates the suit going tight and everything, and your life force, your boots are on and everything, and that's when you feel invincible. Below it, that is for when you need to, to get out of a situation, right, yeah? If you're in a situation and you need to get out and you don't want anybody to see you, what you do is press, hold it in, and you can shoot, but it's best to turn the dial and press it in. And then when that dial comes back round, right, yeah, you've got so many minutes and then it pops back out more or less and then you're back you've got to be careful like i said getting stuck in a, a solid object and that's for us you know like in some of the the situations when we've been in underground facilities secret bases underground and what have you and even you know like um, in terrain where even though there's terrain and you, you've got the enemy surrounding you and you're in deep deep trouble and you need to get out and you you're not being called hq hasn't got you out of that area for whatever reason right you're there won't get to stay there yeah but you need to retreat and what have you or you need to move that's a way that you can go through solid objects trees you know but usually buildings and what have you yeah wall walls you know what i mean you name it can go through vehicles and what have you you know sort of like go through a vehicle you get inside it and what have you and then just press a button and then you're out you know but uh, i've never done that but it's because i <laughs> prefer to be out full stop i won't like to risk it you know what i mean sort of like get trapped <laughs> you know what i mean because that's it i mean shouldn't be laughing you know that is that's a kill you if you get trapped in a, a solid object going through a solid object and you actually it popped out you know what i mean so that's a form of uh, tele you know it's teleportation yeah, yeah. but also it's very similar how to we travel right yeah because one of the things that i haven't told you a hundred percent is that when when I was first taken in this room, we have these two balls, energy balls, which one each one comes up on like a pillar, and they're very similar to crystal balls, right? Yeah. And they travel. At first, they were under his, his hands, and we travel, and you'd go through the gate this big doorway, and it'd only take you seconds and you'd be wherever you were transported to. And then these two balls would be off and you'd be there with the rest of your unit, right? Yeah. Later on, like I was telling you, um, the weapons changed, helmets changed. We stopped wearing helmets and everything when we had um, these uh, implants in his eyes, nose and ears and, and what have you. And 
the weapons jet and and the, this form of these things the the transporters what you could call them which are like these glass these crystal balls we had this like backpack on and on the backpack these things would go back in one at each side in the backpack and then when you were when you were going again when when you were uni or going back to base to pop out again in front of you and there be, you'd go wherever those two balls of light went i think i had a, i thought i had a drawing somewhere with them so um that changed that was like they went in the backpack okay. you know so I always watch out when I see two balls of light. I always get a bit worried. You know what I mean? I'm thinking. <laughs> oh dear. Okay. Uh, um, last question. Um, did did all these missions and events have an impact impact on your outlook outlook? On life. Oh yeah, yeah. You know, it's like every day is the same. You know, you sort of like you, you get up and you know it's your life, isn't it? It's like it, it's what you've 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 lived. There's never a day that isn't something to do with aliens, UFOs, abductions. Ne never been. For over what um, 30 years now, that's been my life. You know, it's a little bit different. You know, I see people on television talking about all this, and they haven't got a clue. And especially G men, anybody government men talking, it's like never trust the G man. <laughs> you know. It's like if if they're telling you something, it's it's the opposite. You know, if anybody from whatever country, no matter what country it is, anybody ever start telling you about this, that's from the government, right? Yeah. Just take it as the opposite. The opposite's going on. I mean, I, I see now that is it next week? Where the Pentagon are starting starting to say that they're going to start looking seriously at UFOs and and uh, aliens again after what fifty odd years. Okay. That that happens next week, doesn't it? I think, if I remember rightly, you know, big deal. You know, sort of like you're you're looking into it after fifty year. Of course you are. Well, why is it then that the aliens are actually fighting? alongside your troops from your country. You know what I mean? So sort of like, having said that, there's a school of thought that says that there's more than one lot of alien races that are fighting um, for, say, like... Um, everybody knows, I think, that governments have people that... Um, that tell them what to do, and they're usually people that are uh, in in industries, if you know what I mean. Big, big industries, and sometimes people in military, in the military, have got money invested in these big companies, and it might be that you know, sort of like different. Uh, factions, different, uh, let's just say, like in, in every country, you've got different political parties, haven't you? And there's a school of thought that say that some of the political parties that used to be in were sides with one lot of alien, uh, alien race, and then along comes a new whatever president or whatever and then they decide that they want to be um, friends and do business with another alien race. So then you've got a country split that, you know, sort of like, have got two different 
alien races that they've, they've been working with. You know what I mean? So then you've got a problem then. And I think that's a problem, you know, sort of like, uh, and that's not only in, in one country. That That's the same as any country around the world because they have different um, political parties in, right, yeah, changing views, right, yeah, and sort of like, obviously, sometimes some just want to do something different because it's it's a, a, a different political party. They can't be seen to just do the same as them. They've got to do with the opposite. <laughs> you know what I mean? Whether it makes sense or not. And you'll get that in every country, unfortunately. You know? So... Do you have any final words? Do I have any final words? I hope they're not my final words. <laughs> 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 help uh, be fine not exactly final words but have I got any words I'd like to say um, you know it's a case of you know this is my account of what's happened to me that's only me but you know sort of like uh I might, I might come across, I don't know, because this, this word super soldier or soldier, um, you know, it, 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 it's, how can I put it? Uh, people don't like the words soldier, super soldier or whatever. They didn't, when I first started talking about this, that's obvious. And I've got witnesses. You know, you can't talk about this. Strange how everybody were talking after I've, I've I've spoken about this a lot, yeah. And all of a sudden, over the past what fifteen years now, you know, people are saying, "Do you know so and so?" Well, funnily enough, I was around fifteen years before then talking about this, and it's documented. I've been in papers talking about it. I've you know sort of like, um, you know, so it's a case of. That's why I put on the, the book, the original Super Soldier, talking about it before any of you lot, whether you like it or not. <laughs> so I'll just say any last words, I'll just turn around and say, yeah, peace and love to everybody. Yeah, thank you. Uh, where where you find you uh, on Amazon for your book? Yeah, uh, you can find me book ET Rider on Amazon. You can find another book which is called Alien Invasion Wales. Uh, again, that's another true account of what happened in 1974 when a battle took place, unbelievable, in North Wales, you know, um, which is part of the United Kingdom. You can get in touch with us at uh, on YouTube or you can get in touch with me at Russell Kelly one at gmail dot com. If you're lucky, you'll find me. Thank you so much for your trust. Quite thank welcome, you. and thank you for having me on uh, on here and uh, talking uh, about this. And uh, keep up the good work, uh, you and Mufon. Thank, thank you, and uh, uh, very, very amazing. And uh, thank you for your trust. Thank you for all. And, um, and I'll see you tomorrow. Yeah, well, you're quite welcome. Quite welcome. Thank you, Russell. Thank you, Kevin. Bye.